Apex, the peak of South African motoring. So as you can see, it is raining outside and I wasn't really expecting it to rain as hard as it currently is. So that's why I'm still in a t-shirt and well, although I'm dry now, I was fairly wet earlier. So Brandon, our very talented cameraman, and I jumped into the BMW iX and well, set off. And what I didn't expect as well is just how quick this 2.5 ton BMW is. <laughs> so the iX is powered by a twin electric motor arrangement, which is coupled to a 111.5 kilowatts per hour battery, and that is gross capacity. The net capacity is 105.2 kilowatts an hour. Total power output, 385 kilowatts and torque 795 so the X drive 50 in which we are currently well it provides more than enough punch for overtaking and going on the long road and with the twin electric motor arrangement the four-wheel drive iX it provides a range of around 500 550 kilometers well what we are currently doing and at the moment we have around 158 kilometers of range left although luckily there's a few electric <laughs> vehicle chargers nearby which well we'll definitely make use of since its introduction the iX was arguably one of the cars that caused <sighs> the most stir in terms of well you guessed it exterior styling it was very divisive at first but soon i think remembering the chris bangle years bmw did produce cars that well it did cause debate and similar to those cars this one did as well but interestingly enough, although there were so many naysayers, everybody I've been talking to and looking at the car, it most certainly turns heads, they love the design. It's almost architectural in nature. It's, it's almost like a sculpture. And although I will, <laughs> I would like to say that I'm on the fence, about the exterior design there's something about it that i really do like i think for this car bmw decided to go big properly big even the badge on the at the back of the car is big and of course we have to mention the grill it is massive and it's of course closed off because this is an electric car so no internal combustion motors no cooling needed for a petrol or diesel engine but interestingly the grill and with some or other trickery from bmw it can repair itself like tiny scratches and tiny chips if it's at room temperature for around 24 hours i believe which, how that works, don't ask me, I'm not sure at all, but, well, it can do it, and, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gobsmacked with how that works. And speaking of the wizardry of the iX, BMW's engineers have also did something with the electric motors so that it, it goes against the Earth's magnetic field. Again, don't ask me how that works because I do not have an engineering degree and I, well, I don't think I can even start to understand it. 
but the drive of the car is absolutely exquisite. I wasn't really expecting it to to be as good as it is. It truly is a great electric vehicle and I have driven most electric vehicles currently on offer in South Africa and this one has to be up there. I'm looking forward to sampling the Audi e-tron GT for myself, the rest of Audi's fully fledged e-tron lineup as well as the upcoming Mercedes-Benz or rather Mercedes EQ vehicles which is scheduled to arrive in very soon or by the time this video is released. But for me, the, the, the quintessential electric car, and I really did adore it, was or is the Porsche Taycan. But it's because I do prefer low-slung sedans or saloons or sports coupes. But this, at the moment, I think when it comes to electric SUVs, this has to be the one to have. It is very expensive though, the iX xDrive 50, the current range stopping model in South Africa, comes in at around 2.175 million rand, but it comes out fairly well, or very well equipped. So inside here you have these beautiful screens, this press unit is equipped with a Bowers and Wilkins sound system, I mean all this this crystal glass units, although if I had to spec an iX, if I were to buy one, I would ditch the crystal finishes for, well, rather black plastic or aluminium finishes. Um, I'm not a big fan of all the bling in the car, but um, I mean, it, there is something quite about it. It makes the car look look classy to a certain extent. Um, but as I mentioned, I would prefer the more traditional um, the more traditional trims for the switch gear. But the interior it's really well crafted. I think it's it's simplistic, minimalistic. I think BMW has really done a stellar job with with the craftsmanship in this car. It, it looks great and everything is fairly straightforward. The menu system works very well, the screen is crisp. Um, although there's a lot of items, a lot of apps in the system which, which I'd say should rather be controlled by a front passenger than the driver themselves. But luckily you don't need to use the touchscreen by itself. You have this scroller here as well, which I prefer, which I've been using most of the time. And then of course this wooden trim with all the buttons hidden beneath it. I really do like this addition of wooden of wood trim inside. I think it adds to the sense of elegance in the car. And I mean the seats are beautifully made. It's very very comfortable. It almost feels like you're sitting in a lounge seat. So it it's just so comfortable especially for those long journeys and and I mean it you will be able to to do that in this car because the range is there's there's sufficient range for doing that. There are a few things though that I find odd, um, and that is, for example, opening the door. Um, now you have a button over there um, to open the door, and that works just fine. At first, I did have some. Well, I did struggle to find how to open the door, um, but I mean, if you're inside, it's so <laughs> it's so nice inside. You might just not want to leave. But the I did I, it did take some time for me to find out. Okay, but whoa, there's a button. But you can also the, open the door via handle, which is located right under here, which. At first I struggled to find as well but I'm sure if you have the car if you own the car that I mean you'll get used to it so that's my biggest gripe of the interior but I think if you 
if you are an IX owner, it's something that you will get used to. I mean, it didn't take, although it did take some time for me to find out how to open the door, um, <laughs> once once I, I found the button and the, the handle at the bottom, it, I mean, you go from there and you know how it works. And then, of course, you have the sunroof, which, again, I'm not sure how that feature works. But, so the sunroof is clear, but once you want to block out the sun, you just press this button over here and, well, it turns opaque, which is very cool. <laughs> I think it's a very neat feature inside this car. But getting back to the interior design, I think it's very clean. There's soft touch materials all around and then some metal bits. It's all of very high quality and it's solidly crafted. Um, during my time spent of this car, I haven't noticed any creaks, no rattles. I think BMW did a stellar job with the inside. If if you don't like the outside, rest assured that the inside, well, is arguably one of the most comfortable interiors you can be in and one of the most beautifully crafted interiors you can be in. And if you don't like the exterior, you are going to spend more time inside the car than looking at it outside. So that won't be a problem then. <laughs> but other than that, the BMW iX is truly a commendable car. I, I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did during my time spent with it, but I really do like it. And it does have it it does have quirks and some some interesting bits here and there but i think as as a package it works quite well i'm looking forward to the rest of bmw i's lineup to arrive in south africa the i4 um etc because if if this is just a taste of what a bmw electric car is going to be like I think we can look forward to some great vehicles in the future. Apex, the peak of South African motoring.